Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Focus on Good Health webinar, If Not Now, When? I'm Susan Harrison, Exit Realty Senior Vice President, Corporate Communications, and I'll be moderating this session. Everyone wants to enjoy good health and wellness, but many of us struggle to incorporate them into our everyday life. Creating change and then sticking with our changes takes commitment and determination, but it's not as time-consuming and overwhelming as you might think. Today we welcome Exit Realty's Focus on Good Health liaison, Samantha Morris. Samantha has always been drawn to fitness, performing arts, nutrition, medicine, and science, and when she isn't busy as Exit Realty's social media coordinator, she spends most of her time living a very active lifestyle. She's a trained ballet and contemporary dancer, has attended yoga certification training, is trained in Reiki, and has competed on an amateur level in Muay Thai. Later this fall, she'll be pursuing her passion to become a trained as fitness instructor. Samantha? Thank you so much, Susan, and thank you everyone for joining us today. Um, today's webinar is called If Not Now, When? And as Susan mentioned, it's because so many of us really want good health and wellness, but it, it, it's quite a struggle to allow for it uh, in our everyday lives. There are so many reasons for why this happens, and often I think many of us feel unsure or discouraged about taking that next step to move forward in our journey. So my question is, if not now, when? What I'm really asking is, why wait until tomorrow to start living your life today? There really is no better time to start than right now. I came across some interesting statistics that I wanted to share that I feel really put things into perspective when it comes to our overall health and wellness. According to the World Health Organization, life expectancy for humans has increased by six years since 1990. Now, when you take into consideration all of the challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis, such as the environment in which we live, the effects that those environments have on the food that we consume, our levels of stress and disease and illness that we might encounter along the way, that's a pretty amazing fact. On the flip side, one of our biggest health challenges is cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease is a disease of the heart and blood vessels that can cause things like heart attack and stroke, and it is the leading cause of death in the world. Cardiovascular disease affects 3 out of 10 people and can be avoided by consuming a healthy diet, exercising regularly, and avoiding tobacco. Another staggering fact is almost 10% of the world's adult population has diabetes. Diabetes is caused by having elevated levels of glucose in the blood. Diabetes is non-discriminatory and it can affect anyone, and part of managing it involves balancing food, exercise, stress levels, and overall general health. The Global Wellness Institute reports that the wellness industry worldwide is a $3.4 trillion market, making it 3.4 times larger than the worldwide pharmaceutical industry. This industry includes healthy eating, nutrition, weight loss, fitness and mind-body services and therapies, wellness lifestyle real estate, wellness tourism and workplace wellness, preventative and personalized medicine, complementary and alternative medicine, and last but certainly not least, beauty and anti-aging. So what does this tell us? That more than ever before, our global population is interested in living healthier lifestyles and that wellness is a priority and that preventative care is becoming top of mind. Consistent with the World Health Organization's definition of health, the Global Wellness Tourism Economy Report defines wellness as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being. It goes beyond mere freedom from disease and emphasizes the proactive maintenance and improvement of health and well-being. Expressed on a continuum that extends from reactive to proactive approaches to health, wellness falls firmly on the proactive side, incorporating attitudes and activities that prevent disease, improve health, enhance quality of life, and bring a person to increasingly optimum levels of well-being. So what does health and wellness mean to you? And how can you allow for it to be a part of your life in order to live the best life possible? You know, that's a really big question, and I think the answer is one that is very personal. Whatever your reasons are for wanting to better your life, and whatever your reasons are for listening to this webinar today, I think it's important to know that everything you need is already inside. There is no one definition that fits all for good health and wellness. And the beauty of this is that you can create a life for yourself where you feel healthy, strong, and vibrant, and that will echo in everything that you do from your relationships to how you carry yourself to how you perform at work. Every accomplishment starts with a decision to try. 
The ripple effect that can be felt when you feel aligned within is undeniable. So let's explore ways to begin to create change. Creating change requires three important things, commitment, discipline, and determination. And change is the sum of several small decisions that we make each day. One of the biggest challenges that I find most people have, including myself, is staying motivated each day. Some of us have trouble starting but are really great at getting things done, and some of us are great at starting things but have trouble finishing. To stay motivated throughout the ebb and flow of your day, take things one day at a time. Every day you will experience challenges and victories, and that is okay. Do your best to surround yourself with positivity and be kind to yourself. Having a solid support system is really important when making any kind of major change in your life. So if that is lacking or there are people around you that may be hindering your progress, you may wish uh, to reevaluate those relationships. Visualize accomplishing your goals regularly and don't compare yourself to others. This is so very valuable throughout your journey. Using your imagination is something I think most of us are really good as children, but a lot of us have probably forgotten how to do that along the way. Consider spending a few minutes each day imagining and visualizing what good health and wellness feels like. Don't worry about how you're going to get there, but focus on how it feels and allow for that feeling to be imprinted in your mind and in your heart. Know that your journey is specific to you and that you really can't compare your goals or your progress to anyone else. Good health is not a competition. It is a lifestyle. Don't feel discouraged or disheartened by the choices of others or of their opinions. Recognize your progress and reward yourself. I think this is really important uh, because many of us are really hard on ourselves. Any kind of change takes time. So check in with yourself maybe twice a month. Keep a journal about what you've been doing and how far you've come. This is a great way to stay self-motivated. You can also partner up with a friend or family member to stay accountable, which is great for those days when you feel a little less motivated to stay on track. You may want to consider using a fitness tracker or app to give perspective on what you're currently doing and also so that you can measure your progress over time. Just stick to whatever tools or tricks work for you to keep you going. You know, there's a plethora of information available now, everything from dieting and nutrition to fitness and preventative health measures. So where do you start? First and foremost, always consult your healthcare professional for advice. Whether you chat with your medical doctor, a naturopath, or fitness professional, each and every one of you is unique, and it's really important to understand where you are in order to determine where you are going. Evaluate your limitations, such as health conditions or injuries, or even time. What you do to nourish your health and wellness should never be at your own expense or at an expense to those around you. When you commit to change, it's amazing how it can empower your life. Making just one commitment to yourself, no matter how big or how small, will help pave the way through your journey. So let's talk fitness. Fitness is about being physically fit and healthy, not about conforming to a certain look, shape, or body weight. What is amazing about fitness is by incorporating it regularly into your life, not only can you reduce your chances of cardiovascular disease and diabetes, but regular exercise will strengthen your bones and muscles as well as improve your mental health and mood, creating a more enjoyable life experience. Personally, I've always had a love for physicality, and I also like to challenge myself to see what I'm capable of doing. That is part of what fuels my fire to stay fit. I truly believe that it is important to find your why for fitness and to remind yourself of that why often to help stay focused. Creating a visual, vision board, writing daily affirmations, or using creative visualization is a great way to define and imagine your why. I used to be really motivated to exercise on my own, but I've actually found that classes are a great way to stay motivated because of the community of people that I've been able to connect with as they keep me accountable. No matter how you choose to commit, whether it be solo, with a group, or somewhere in between, just go with what feels right. You might start out by walking for 20 minutes a day and then joining a walking group. Your walks might become runs and before you know it, you, you'll be signing up for group runs and races. I know for some of you that seems hard to imagine, but you'd be surprised at the number of people I speak with who have said, I can't for most of their lives and then discovered I can through a little discipline and commitment. 
One of my favorite quotes is, what you do today is important because you are exchanging a day of your life for it. So find some kind of physical activity, and it can be anything that speaks to you that you can fall in love with. Time is most certainly a consideration. Many people that I speak with say they simply don't have the time to commit to a fitness routine. And you know what? I absolutely believe them. Between work, family, and everything else that we try to cram into our days, we've got to make time to go for that walk, to take a class, or to go to the gym. I promise you, though, once you start doing it regularly and begin to feel the benefits, you won't be able to stop yourself. A big challenge for many of us is the state in which we find ourselves, that of immediate gratification, wanting everything now but not really willing to put in the time in order to see and maintain results. It would be nice to have whatever our view is of a perfect body immediately, but we kind of know that that's completely unrealistic. If you imagine or think of an athlete, fitness person, or an expert of anything that you admire, it's probably safe to say that they've put in a serious amount of time in order to get where they are. And the truth is, we have to work just as hard. I recently watched a fascinating documentary on CrossFit athletes called Fittest on Earth. It follows the most elite CrossFit athletes through competition. And these people can do unbelievable things with their bodies with incredible tenacity. But they still have doubts. They still have fears. And they still are faced with asking themselves, can I really do this? So instead of worrying about having a perfect body, how about focusing on having perfect or close to perfect health? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we could all commit to living a healthier, happier, and more active lifestyle each and every day to improve our quality of life as well as our entire experience? I think if we start there, everything else, including the way we perceive ourselves to look, will fall into place. A couple of key tips. Don't be afraid to ask questions. I spoke with a friend of mine who is a personal trainer and fitness instructor at my local gym, and she said that hardly anyone ever asks questions about exercise. If you're new to fitness, it's totally normal to not know what perfect form is or proper form is, or how to properly do an exercise. So once you've decided on a fitness regime that interests you, do yourself a favor and ask an instructor or trainer for guidance. Another key tip, once you've got momentum, in your endeavors, try to do a variety of things. You might walk today, cycle tomorrow, and lift weights on the weekend, and then hit up a yoga or Pilates class next week. As Greg Glassman, the founder of CrossFit, says, routine is the enemy. It's important to keep your body and your mind guessing, and having a diverse fitness plan will help you create change. Good nutrition goes hand in hand with fitness. Fueling your body so you always feel at your best seems like it's a really complicated science, but if you have a general understanding of proteins, fats, carbohydrates, and calories, you can be well equipped to make good decisions when it comes to food. This also means getting comfortable reading labels. A good rule of thumb is if you can't pronounce the ingredient, you might want to consider whether or not you should consume it, or at least look it up to see what it is. At the end of the day, it's really important to maintain balance within your body. Proteins are used by the body to build, repair, and maintain muscle tissue. Protein is essential for growth and building new tissues as well as repairing broken down tissue. High protein sources include meats, fish, cheese, beans, yogurt, eggs, and nuts. Carbs have had a pretty bad rap as of late, but they can actually be a really great fuel source for your brain and your body. What's important to understand is that there are two types of carbohydrates, sugary or simple carbohydrates and complex or slower burning carbohydrates. It's the simple carbs that get us into trouble. They're the quickest source of energy, but also the least beneficial, and they include things like sugar, corn syrup, jams, fruit drinks, soft drinks, and candy. Complex carbs, on the other hand, are more satisfying and health promoting. They are often rich in fiber and are commonly found in whole plants, and are therefore higher in vitamins and minerals. Some examples of food sources of complex carbs are green vegetables, whole grains, starchy vegetables, and beans. Fats are the most energy dense of the three macronutrients, and there are three main categories. Saturated fats found mainly in animal and dairy products, as well as in some oils, are used to make are used by the liver to make cholesterol, which is involved in the production of hormones such as testosterone. This is really important as experts say that you need some fat in your diet in order to keep the body's hormones production where it should be. 
Polyunsaturated fats are found in things like corn, soybean, and sunflower oils, as well as in some fish oils. This type of fat may help lower total cholesterol, but that includes good cholesterol, and therefore experts say intake of this type of fat should be limited. Monounsaturated fats are found in vegetable and nut oils, such as olive, peanut, and canola. They can help lower bad cholesterol without lowering good cholesterol. In addition to these three main categories, we also have trans fats. Trans fats occur when polyunsaturated oils are altered into solid foods like margarine and shortening. Experts say these fats should be avoided altogether if possible. Understanding calories is also important because not all calories are created equal. A low calorie diet made up of unhealthy or overprocessed foods is very different from a high calorie diet made up of whole foods that your body will process quickly into energy. Your daily calorie requirements depend on your age, gender, height, weight, and exercise level. But most data available is based on what is thought to be good for an average woman or average man. But you all know that you're not average. So consult a healthcare professional to determine what you should be consuming in order to get closer to your goals. That being said, knowing how much you consume and what you're actually putting into your body is very useful. So consider keeping a journal, even if just for one week, and jot down and evaluate what you're eating. Let's discuss public health enemy number one, sugar. We've learned so much about sugar and how bad it is for your body, bad for your skin, and bad for your health. And it is absolutely everywhere. Sugar has been implicated in everything from chronic, life-threatening health issues, such as diabetes and heart disease, to skin problems and weight gain. Not only does sugar spike blood glucose levels, but it also causes inflammation in the body, which triggers the immune system. Sugar is also known to be highly addictive, having the same effects on your brain as heroin. And seeing as sugar is found in so many of the foods that we consume, it's no surprise that this silent threat is present in our lives. I'd like to be bold and challenge you all to a three-day sugar detox, if, of course, your healthcare professional agrees. Just three days where you consume no more than 15 grams of sugar per serving of food. Now, this will mean cutting down on things like soda, alcohol, baked goods, ice cream, and juices. Having too much sugar in your system is what drives fatigue and mood swings, in addition to having severe long-term effects on your mind and your body. So see how you feel after three days. Maybe three days will turn into seven. Another aspect of good health and wellness is practicing mindfulness. Being mindful is defined as the quality or state of being conscious or aware of something. Mindful, mindfulness is a state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations. You've probably heard many people speak about being more present in their day-to-day -day activities, living a more balanced life when it comes to work, home, and play, or even eating in a more mindfully way. Mindfulness can be developed through meditation and can bring a lot of enjoyment to your overall life experience. Large population-based research studies have shown that the practice of mindfulness is strongly correlated with well-being and perceived health. So how do you incorporate mindfulness into your life? Start by taking a few minutes each day to observe your surroundings, by being present, and by truly allowing your senses to experience each moment. Meditation brings more peace, contentment, and happiness, and can help to decrease stress and anxiety. There are countless guided meditations available online and in apps for smartphones, and I highly suggest giving at least one a try to get started. Taking a few minutes out of each day to express gratitude towards yourself by practicing mindfulness will have an impact on the course of your day. It's a highly effective way to maintain a good attitude, have mental clarity, and to stay motivated. So let's talk grit. Grit in psychology is a positive, non-cognitive trait based on an individual's passion for a particular long-term goal or end state, coupled with a powerful motivation to achieve their respective objective. This perseverance of effort promotes the overcoming of obstacles or challenges that lie in within a gritty individual path to accomplishment and serves as a driving force in achievement realization. So for an athlete, grit is simply known as courage and resolve or strength of character. 
I recently listened to a TED Talk by psychologist Angela Lee Duckworth entitled Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance. In her talk, Angela focuses primarily on grit in children and on education. I do believe, however, that much of what she says can be applied to us as adults and that by having grit or by persevering and being pa passionate is what will truly help us accomplish our goals. Overcoming fear takes courage, and failing from time to time is part of the process. So as you begin to make lifestyle choices, it's important to be kind to yourself when you've had a bad day, a bad week, or even a bad month. Health and wellness is not just about how you feel today, but more so about how you can feel your best throughout your life. There are absolutely no quick fixes, and it truly is a lifelong journey to be embraced. In his book, Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell examines the conditions required for optimal success. And what he found was it's the importance of goals followed by lots and lots and lots of practice that make all the difference. 10,000 hours of practice, to be exact. That means 20 hours per week for 10 years to be a contender of excellence. So my question again to all of you is, if not now, when? What can you do for 20 hours per week for the next 10 years to add to your life? At the end of the day, you are up to you, but you must know that by making a decision on what you want today and then by consistently putting in the time, you will yield results. Know that it never gets easier, you just get stronger, and that you truly can live a wonderful and vibrant life if that is what is important to you. I mentioned a couple of resources, and I just wanted to give you the links. Our Focus on Good Health website, focusongoodhealth.com, is Exit Realty's health and wellness initiative. Throughout the website, you'll find a series of articles, recipes, videos, as well as 365 days of health and wellness tips in calendar form. You can print off each month and post it at home or at work, and it gives a simple tip or an, an, an idea to consider each day to help you along your, your journey. On Exit Realty's YouTube channel, we've got two fantastic health webinars that I highly suggest listening to. The first webinar features guest speaker Dr. Greg Barron. Dr. Barron is the co-founder and chief wellness officer for Dream Wellness in New York. And in his webinar entitled Spring into Wellness, he discusses how wellness comes from the inside out and how most people focus on what they need to do, but very few people focus on who they need to be. His webinar is highly informative and motivating to listen to, regardless of where you are in your health and wellness journey. The second webinar features guest speaker Erica Nasby. In addition to being an integral member of Exit Realty's Mindset Training Systems team of professionals, Erica is an, inter an international speaker and coach. Her webinar, entitled Vitamins for the Soul, explores psychoneuroimmunology, also known as PNI. It's how thoughts and feelings impact our health. She emphasizes the importance of knowing what you want in your health, in your relationships, in your career, and in your life, and she gives you tips on how you can set yourself up for success in all of those areas. The CrossFit documentary that I mentioned is called Fittest on Earth, and it is available via Apple iTunes. The TED Talk with Angela Lee Duckworth, entitled Grit, The Power of Passion and Perseverance, can be found at TED.com. And there are three other websites that I frequently read um, that have numerous articles and tips about health, wellness, nutrition, and fitness. And they are mindbodygreen.com, wellandgood.com, and furthermore from Equinox. So Susan, you mentioned to me earlier about some of the interesting answers to our webinar questions. Yes, I did. A lot of the people who registered for this webinar indicated that they struggle with finding the time to incorporate health and wellness into their life. You know, we all know people who have been suddenly sidelined by health challenges. So if we don't take the time every day, our bodies will shut us down for repairs and we'll be forced to take time to recover. Can you please restate your top tips for finding time? Absolutely. You know, time is a funny thing and <laughs> we can either have a hold on it or it can get the best of us. Um, but I really think that it's safe to say, and I'm sure most people will agree, when something is, is really important to you, you'll find the time. And, it, and it's hard because we get totally consumed with our day-to-day -day lives between work, family, and everything else. And there could be you know, tragedies, there could be victories, there could be all kinds of um, pivotal things happening in your life. And sometimes you know, paying attention to you or your health and wellness ends up being lost on the list. So 
you really have to have or you have to find that conviction within yourself to realize that this is a priority. And then slowly you'll be able to find the time. So, you know, it, it's something that you'll accumulate over time. And the more passionate you become uh, about it, you'll find that you'll make more time for it. Um, you also have to allow yourself for a little bit of grace. You know, each day is going to provide you with a different experience. And most people's days aren't predictable. So if something comes up and you can't make it to the gym or, you know, you're traveling and it's really hard to, to stick to eating clean or whatever it is, um, allow yourself a little bit of flexibility and grace in those moments. You can't be too hard on yourself because um, life is not a routine. You know, every day is not the same. Um, I know a lot of people, uh, especially in our industry, have inconsistent schedules. They're on planes, they're in the cars, they're driving clients to appointments, they're, you know, got their families to care for and everything else under their belt. Um, so again, also being flexible and finding the time to fit certain things in, whether it be, you know, a little bit of, of fitness at home um, or making the time to do a little bit of meal prep on the weekends. You've got to be able to adapt to your own lifestyle. So it's understanding where you are in your own life and adapting to the best of your ability and allowing yourself a little bit of flexibility in that too. Yeah, I hear you. I read a book once by a psychologist on how making tiny changes can have a huge positive impact on someone's life. In one of the case studies, he talked about a woman who wanted to incorporate health and wellness but didn't know where to start. He suggested that she simply stand up during TV commercials. The point being that by doing so, she disrupted her routine enough that it opened the door to further change. He eventually suggested that she walk in place and then use a treadmill and so on. But isn't it interesting how one tiny change can make a big difference? 100%. It's um, it's like it, it it truly is the ripple effect in the pond, right? You, you you drop a tiny pebble and it creates this ripple that will echo throughout the entire body of water. Um, each thought, each feeling, each action, it's all part of the big picture. So every day as you go through it and you have your feelings um, and your thoughts and you go through each activity, that's all going to contribute to what your end goal is. So, you know, if you're not sure where to start, you start anywhere because it doesn't really matter where you start. You know, at the end of the day, when you're going to look back on your life, it's going to be the sum of all of those days that's going to make the difference. So, you know, even the smallest of gestures could actually yield the biggest results. And if anything, it's even just in your own mindset. It doesn't even have to be a result in your body. It could be just in the way you feel about yourself or the way that you look at your life. Mm -hmm, absolutely. One of my biggest pet peeves is how people talk to themselves, like I was bad for having that piece of chocolate cake. Wouldn't you agree that we should treat ourselves with the same kindness and encouragement we would our best friend? Definitely. You know, when I enjoy um, <laughs> a nice piece of pie, I, I don't, I can't, <laughs> you know, and we've done this here before at the office, you and I, um, it, there's no sense in self-hate. Um, it's actually been said that negative self-talk stimulates the production of stress hormones in your body. So why would you want that negativity inside of you? There's enough negativity in the outside world. Um, we don't need to add any more to our inside world because it, it directly correlates and affects our health. Um, again, allowing yourself for a little bit of grace and, uh, and knowing that it's not what you do once in a while, but it's really truly what you do every day. Um, you're allowed to indulge from time to time. You're allowed to enjoy you know, the richer things in life. You're allowed to have a day where you don't do anything. You kind of need that. There needs to be balance. It can't all be strict routine all the time um, because that's not how life is. It's not routine like that. So, you know, just being kind to yourself and saying, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to indulge today and I'm really going to enjoy the food. You know, actually being present and enjoying something that you might eat that you wouldn't normally eat every day, something that's a little bit richer, uh, could be a super enjoyable experience. And, and, you know, why would you bash yourself for that? There's no point in that. Absolutely. If you're going to have that chocolate cake, make it a really good piece of chocolate cake. Make it, make it the entire cake. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like we had when well, we had uh, coconut cream pie for breakfast, right? Yeah, that was a good day. It was a good day. <laughs> you know, I had to smile. One of the folks who registered for this session said she had a hard time staying motivated because burgers and fries taste better than broccoli. And, yep. you know, I can't <laughs> agree with that. <laughs> Instant gratification has become a challenge in all aspects of life. How can we stay focused and get ourselves out of wanting what we want when we want it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's funny because I think we experience that in everything. We experience it when we're in the lineup at the supermarket. We just want to be, you know, served 
immediately. We don't want to wait. Or, you know, uh, we see that item that's maybe a little bit too expensive, but, you know, we just want to consume it immediately or obtain it immediately. And that's the same with health and wellness. It would be awesome if we could just have everything at the snap of our fingers. But that's not that's not realistic. That's not real. Um, I think we all know that good things are worth working for. Um, the journey does not have to be strict in order to get it, but it takes time. So I think mindfulness brings us back to that moment. You know, it taking the time each day to look within as opposed to constantly being distracted on what's around us, I think helps to center us and, and, you know, realize that it's the moments in between that make the difference. It's not just about getting that thing or eating that thing or looking a certain way in the immediate moment. It's about the moments in between that bring us there. So that mindful practice, uh, you know, taking a little time to either meditate or just reflect um, or visualize how you want your day to look and feel, uh, I think goes a long way for that. Yeah, for sure. So you're super fit. How do you get yourself out of a funk and stay motivated? You know, um, we all have days, right? And and <laughs> there are months when I'm so dedicated and people are kind of wondering what's wrong with me and there are other <laughs> days or, you know, not really weeks, but anyway, where I fall off. It's normal. Everybody does. Even the the most highly trained athlete will have those moments and that's it's all part of it, again, going back to that balance. But in order to get back out onto the horse, you know, when we've fallen off or let's say we've taken a vacation and it's an all-inclusive and they have the most amazing food and, you know, eating hash browns every day, um, I, I try to remind myself of how I feel when I'm at my best. And I think that's what draws me back is that feeling. Again, it's not about fitting into certain size jeans. It's not about looking a certain way, but I just really want to feel good because when I feel good, I feel like I can do anything. And I think that's true for a lot of people. Um, when you feel you're your best self is when, you know, everything's a little bit more beautiful. So that's what I try to remind myself of when I've fallen off or, you know, I've had a bad day. And I think that's, I think it's a good place to start. But sometimes you just have to close the door to your blanket for it, stay inside and color for the day, be nice to yourself and then start over tomorrow, right? Totally, totally. You know what, there's a lot to be said about rest and downtime, and that's part of it too. It's just not, it's, it's not just about being a workaholic or overtraining, um, but you've got to rest, you've got to sleep well, you want to be able to put your feet up, enjoy good quality time with yourself or with your family, um, and that's just as important as the other two parts of your life. So trust your body. Your body always knows what it needs and what to do. So, you know, I think we, if we spend a little bit more time listening to our insides, to, uh, to what our bodies need, then we can be better to ourselves. So if your body's saying, I really need a day off, you know, I really need to just, my work can wait till Monday, you know, it's Saturday morning, my work can wait till Monday, maybe the house cleaning can wait a few hours, and I just need to just put my feet up, maybe read a good book, or just relax. That's okay. You know, just listen to your body. Absolutely. You know, you've given such great information today. Flip to your contact information on the last slide. Oh, and yeah. to close out today, um, what has been the most positive income for you personally throughout your health and wellness journey? Uh, for me, you know, people who know me know that I'm slightly competitive. Um, <laughs> but, but uh, And I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So, you know, when I was studying, especially with ballet, um, in terms of the technique, it was so important at that time to really perfect each movement and really, um, you know, attain technique as I thought it would be uh, in order to be sort of a perfect representation of myself. But I think over the years what I've learned um, with all of the different things that I've dabbled in, and I'm sure there will be many more new things that I try in the future, again, it really comes down to how I feel. Um, I think it's such a rewarding feeling at the end of the day when you know, you're about to fall asleep and you realize that you've taken a little bit of time out for yourself. I think that allows us to be better to others. Like if you love yourself, you can love yourself, uh, love others more. Um, and I think that goes hand in hand um, with treating yourself well when it comes to your health and wellness. Um, so at the end of the day, that's really what's become the most important is to, f is to feel as good as I can and to know that I've taken the time to put myself first, even if it's just for 15 minutes a day. Thank you so much, Samantha, and thank you to everybody for joining us today. Please watch for information on our next Focus on Good Health webinar on Wednesday, November 30th. Bye for now.